it's Lance with Love to Hate back again with another video. It's just myself today as this is a solo video about a solo game. Today I have for you Pocket Book Adventures. This is a, as I mentioned, a solo adventure book that you are going to be able to play through with just a pencil. That's right. All you need is a pencil to play this game. No dice, no cards, not anything else. Uh, this is a game that is going to be running on Kickstarter here in the very near future, so be on the lookout for that. Check out the link down below in the description of this video after you watch this. And uh, this comes from designer David David and Grumpy Spider Games. Let me show you a little bit of how it plays down below, and then I'll come back and share my thoughts on this. All right, here's the Pocket Book Adventures. Let me show you guys what you're going to find inside this. Now, I do want to mention that this is the prototype edition, so the uh, final components uh, or the final book may look different when it is released from the Kickstarter. That being said, let's show you what you have here. And so you're going to have a quick how to play, and this is a very simple game. The, the basic thing that you really need to understand is how to aim. And so how this is going to work is anytime that you're going to need to aim and try to hit this target, Target. There's going to be a spot on the map. Um, we'll just say that maybe this is the spot right out here. And you're going to have your pencil right there on that marking. And you can't have anything else touching the paper, so no part of your hand can be touching the paper like that. And without looking at the page, you'll look straight ahead. So not looking here on the paper, I am supposed to try to pick up my pencil and move it to the bullseye and try to hit the bullseye, or at least as close to the bullseye as I can. Each ring that I am outside Side of that bullseye, I'm going to have to pay a penalty, usually losing health or something of the sorts. So that's one huge main mechanic that you'll work with in this game. Now, what else you have going on in this? You're going to be taking out different enemies throughout the course of the, the game. You're, you're going to have maps that you'll be following. In fact, here, let me show you exactly what you'll be finding in this game. So here's the very first map. And if you don't want any spoilers, then go ahead and skip past this portion of the video. But here is Area 1 Grasslands. Now, each map is going to look different. You're going to have different obstacles, different uh, terrain that you're not able to cross. And essentially, you are going to be free to move through throughout the course of this, having to follow certain rules for movement. Now, in the beginning, there's not many rules, but as you progress through this campaign and the different maps that you're going to find, there will be some rules that restrict how you're able to move. And you have to, you'll have to think through your movement. And one other thing that you're really wanting to try to do is be efficient as you move throughout this map, because however many spaces you move will determine how many stars you're able to collect. As you can see here, I didn't collect any of the movement stars because I had moved too many spaces. So you want to try to be efficient. Anyhow, what you're doing is you'll start on the spot here that has the silhouette of the person and you're just going to move. And if you run into an enemy, you're going to be taking on that different enemy. So for instance, the pixie here, I mentioned there'd be a spot where you would place your pencil and that's going to be right there. And without, again, without looking at the paper, I'm supposed to try to pick up my pencil and place it right in the bullseye in order to take out this pixie. Now, if I do that, I don't suspect sustain any damage. If I get in this, this second ring here, I'm going to sustain one damage. And if I hit the second outer ring, then I'm going to sustain two damage. Now, also these enemies are going to have status effects. If I hit any of the darker shaded regions, then I'm going to suffer this status effect, which is going to be different depending on what the map is. And sometimes it might actually be a good thing. Uh, and so that's how the enemies are going to work. You can see here that you're also going to be collecting hearts, which will restore your, your HP, your hit power, and you're going to have a max that you'll have to work with and try to increase throughout the course of the campaign. You can also collect gold throughout the course of the game keeping track of that there you're going to write your statuses there that you uh, collect from different enemies you can collect items and weapons throughout the course of the campaign and uh, there's going to be a treasure chest more often than not on the maps in order in order to open those treasure chests you'll need to collect the key first which is uh, right here on this particular map and how the treasure chest works is you'll keep your pencil where the treasure chest is and same process hopefully you'll hit the bullseye here if you do so, you'll get 10 gold for hitting the bullseye for each ring that you move out from. You will lose uh, 2 gold. So uh, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, no gold if you don't hit the bullseye at all. So 
that is an example of how the maps work. Now, also you're going to find throughout the course of this campaign, other types of maps or, or obstacles that you are going to have. Now, these are training zones. And so from the particular person here, you'll pay a number of gold to try and hit the bullseye. And uh, in doing so, you will gain certain things. Plus, there's a store here for you to buy certain items and weapons for the next missions that you go on. Now, also, without spoiling too much, there are bosses for you to take on. So each area is going to have a particular boss that you're going to try to beat, such as Fluffle, the Oak Warrior, or Orc Warrior, excuse me. Uh, and so... Fluff, Fluffy here, or Fluffle, or however you say his name, he is going to be moving about the board as well, trying to attack you, trying to take your health down, and he has a health here that you are trying to battle him for. And uh, it's pretty cool how this is done. Now, there's a whole lot more in here. I don't want to spoil it for you, but you can see just how much content is in this game. At the very back of this book, there's going to be a, a summary here to show you just how well you did, the number of stars that you collected for your baddies, your damage, your distance, and a, an opportunity to write in what uh, you, your accomplishments were for your hero. And uh, also, if you fill out this entire book and you want to play again, there will be a QR code for here for you to be able to download and print off more pages for you to be able to go through this again if you want to do so. Anyhow, that's what you have here with the Pocketbook Adventure. Let's go back up top and share my thoughts on this one. All right, so there you have it. That is what is inside the Pocketbook Adventure here. And so this is a uh, book, and you can see the entire book right here, uh, that it's chock full of adventures for you to go on. Um, different maps, different creatures that you're going to be battling, each with their own different rule sets and ways to have to overcome the different obstacles that you'll be facing in this game. Lots of little puzzles that for you to try to figure out throughout the course of the adventure. And you're wanting to try to be efficient while you go about doing this, having a good path that you're following and trying to take out monsters and not taking too much damage, trying to get as many victory points as you can throughout the course of the campaign. And it's, it's also dexterity and skill based in the sense that you're going to be trying to pick up your pencil and move it so many, so many inches or millimeters without actually looking at the paper. I think that's a really cool mechanic. Never really seen that done before. And it's great that you just need a pencil to be able to do that. You don't need anything else. Uh, really cool how that works makes it very portable, easily to, to play this anywhere that you, you can imagine. Um, I've taken it with me, I've just thrown it in my backpack, stuck it uh, in a bag and taken it to work. I've taken it to um, where I've worked out before. Um, taking it to lots of different places and wherever I have 10, 5, 10 minutes, I'm able to just kind of open it up and do a quick little mission real quick and then move on to the next one. Uh, really kind of cool. I love the fact that uh, as you progress into this, each one seems to get a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging, more for you to think about ways to have to kind of overcome whatever's on the page there for you. Um, and it's pretty quite clever how uh, the designer, David, he was able to kind of make this not be samey. Uh, it can be easily, it can, can get repetitive, but that's not what you see in this. You have a new challenge each page you flip over, and that's really kind of cool. Um, for it to be as many pages as it is, there's a whole lot of uh, gameplay value in this, and and it's pretty good. It's high quality. I'm, I'm really kind of impressed that this this uh, he was able to make this, and so um, it makes me excited to see other uh, this venture into other things. Uh, I would be curious to see if he's going to come out with anything else or, or different genres or, or more puzzles to try to figure out. Uh, it's really pretty cool. I'm quite impressed with this. So um, I would highly recommend it if you are a solo player um, or if you're just somebody who likes to game whenever and wherever, because that, as I've already said, you can really take this wherever. I mean, you can even stick your pencil in the spiral bound here and, and just take this wherever you need to and um, you can play a game. Um, really pretty cool. I have enjoyed it very well, and that is Pocketbook Adventures. It is from Grumpy Spider Games. Make sure to click that link down below. It'll take you to the campaign so that you can check this out for yourself and back it. 
All right, leave some comments down below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to be notified of all of our great new content. I'm Lance, and this is Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers.